Well, this is Robert Kiyosaki, and I have some very interesting and I think important events to be talking to you about. Uh, before I go on, is, uh, I'll be in Dallas with my advisors, or some of them, and my wife, on April 24th. So if you're in the Dallas area, please stop by. I think the price is less than 100 bucks for a whole day. But most importantly, you'll be hearing about other types of investments that uh, will probably be doing well in the future. <laughs> And then, of course, there's my Phoenix event, three days, April 30th, 1st, 2nd, and May 1st and May 2nd, and it's dollar versus the gold, gold standard, or gold versus the U.S. dollar. And I think this is the most important event I have ever put on, uh, simply because of the instructors. You know, one of them is uh, Mike Maloney, who's the author of gold and, gold, How to Invest in Gold and Silver, uh, and Richard Duncan, who was one of the uh, people of the IMF and the World Bank, but also the author of Dollar Crisis. So this is a very important event, and I think there is no more timely event that I've ever put on. Uh, before this, I was always kind of early. I talked about how to predict the future before, and we did a study of Richard Duncan's book, The Dollar Crisis, about five years ago. But today, we're in the crisis, and this is why this is so important. Um, I apologize in talking about why this event is so important. Uh, Alan Greenspan last week testified before the U.S. Congress. Alan Greenspan was the former Federal Reserve Chairman. And uh, as typical with most of these guys, they said well, they, 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 they never saw a bubble coming. But uh, the reason I apologize is there was an article in the USA Today last week, and I was reading it, and he said something in there, which is the reason I wanted people to tune in today. Because what Alan Greenspan said is very, very important. He said that the U.S. Federal Reserve is no longer in control. And the reason that no longer in control, in the way he referred to it, is Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which is these big loan GSEs, government sponsors, enterprises. They're more powerful than he is. And then after Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the banks like Goldman Sachs, which he comes from, took over. So the, kind of, the thing that is really quite interesting today is that the Federal Reserve Cham Chairman uh, Greenspan has finally admitted that the Fed has no, no control anymore. And those guys are more powerful than Barack, Barack, um, Barack Obama. In, in other words, the Federal Reserve Chairman has more power than the President of the United States, very simply for the reason the Federal Reserve Chairman has the power to write checks in the billions and trillions of dollars. So my whole message today, and the reason why this event with Richard Duncan and with Tom Wheelwright, who is a CPA, because taxes are going to go up, is so important, is very simple because everything is out of control right now. I know the stock markets are going up and people feel euphoria is coming on, but as Greenspan said in his article last week, we have lost control. It's like driving a car down the road on ice and you're now out of control entirely. Which brings me to the point here is in a number of my articles, which I've written for people of Conspiracy of the Rich, is that I suspected we were at the point of no return in the economy. And every economy goes through this. It's like, it's like your health. There's a point where you're okay, and then one day, your whole system starts to break down, and you're going to die anyway. Well, when I wrote Conspiracy of the Rich, I, I, I hinted that we were at the point of no return. The reason the point of no return was back in 1980, the deficits were in the million, or the bailouts were in the millions. Then in the 90s, they're in the billions, and today they're in the trillions. So I was kind of guessing at this point of no return. But I went on this Saturday, this is what I do on my weekends, I went to the Austrian School of Economics, and a man named Ludwig von Mises. And uh, he, he was here over 100 years ago. But these economists actually measure the point of no return. So although I was kind of BSing and guessing that we're at the point of no return, just the size of the debt, these economists actually figured it out. And years ago, this man Ludwig von Mises figured out that the point of no return was measured at 70, when debt is 73% of GDP. And today, uh, their figures show that the U.S. is now, let's see, 96% of GDP. We have now gone so far beyond it cannot recover. 
this economy cannot recover. And then when it comes to percent of exports, what is the debt as percent of exports? It's 230 percent, but today debt as the U.S. debt as relative to export is 748 percent. So ladies and gentlemen, we are now past the point of return officially as measured by economists, which makes these events more important, simply because what exactly is going to happen here is I don't really know. I could see this coming, but now we are at the point of no return. History has never been here before. So what exactly is going to happen? I can just tell you this much. You can watch the price of gold today. You watch money is coming out of the bond market, going into the stock market, and everything is going a little, little nuts right now. So what these guys talked about on Saturday was six of them. And they spoke about, and they were really good. They weren't the typical economists who were quite funny and laughing and all this. But they said something that I thought was really, really interesting. See, back in 1914, when the German economy was going through the same uh, ups and downs as we are right now, they said this. They said the German people had no idea anything was going on. And I'll say it again. So back when all this hyperinflation and all this stuff was going on, the German people were clueless. And see, so the other night, Kim and I were going out to dinner. We we're at this big restaurant, and people are spending money like crazy. They're saying, well, the economy is coming back. And that's exactly what these guys were saying, the von Mises Society, is people have no idea what's going on. And then he said, around 1923, they finally woke up. They went, oh my God what is happening. And those were the stories of people taking wheelbarrows full of money and people were stealing the wheelbarrow and leaving the money because they were printing so much money. And that's why our debts now in the trillions of dollars are printing so much money. They have printed more money in one year than we printed in the first 200 years of the United States existence. So we're at the point of no return, you can see by these numbers right here. So they said what happened is suddenly the whole thing collapsed on them. People panicked. And when they realized that cash in their hand was not worth anything, that's when they started buying anything. So there was a boom in you know, real estate, there was a boom in this, there was a boom in wheelbarrows, and a boom in this, because people were dumping their dollars as fast as possible. So if you look at what's going on in the U.S. economy today, people are saving money, saving money, saving money, saving money, which is absolutely the worst thing you can do. So that's why the events in Dallas, again, are important and Phoenix are important because the vast majority of people, number one, think that they think the crisis is over, and number two is they're saving money. They said when that crisis hits, when they finally realize that your dollars are worth nothing, or the yen, or the peso, or the pound, or the euro, that's when people panic and the prices of gold go through the roof and all this. So history does have a tendency to repeat. I'm not saying it will repeat exactly the same but we're at the point of no return right now. Now this is the last thing I want to say. It was in 1914 to 1923, approximately nine years. That was a period of actual kind of euphoria and then the, the lights went on to people. They said, oh my God, this economy is shot. They had gone past the point of no return. So that was 1924. In 1933, a man named Adolf Hitler came to power. And that is what happens historically throughout time. You've read my book, Conspiracy of the Rich. Every time the economy collapses, despots or dictators or those kinds of guys appear. So that was Hitler, that was Mao Zedong, it was also Napoleon. And these are the people that appear. And the thing they try and do next, and this is what's probably going to happen next, because Obama's already doing it, they're going to try and impose more controls, more controls to keep the economy from crashing. So, you know, Nixon tried it, they called it, call it wage and price controls, and the moment they do that, the economy is in very bad shape. So people say, well, Obama's not really doing that yet. Well, he already is in many ways, uh, and I like Mr. Obama, but he's already doing what those other guys did before. They start taking control, so Obama has now nationalized General Motors, the auto industry. They've nationalized the banking industry. They're probably going to nationalize the airline industry. They've nationalized the medical industry. They've already nationalized education. And that's what happens when the economies start to come, to come apart, 
it's the socialist government type control people. The people think they can control the world, start taking, taking over. And that leads to only two things, or three things, should I say. One is fascism, socialism, or communism. So that's kind of where we are today. I'm not saying either one will happen, but I can already see the indications of it happening as I speak to you today. So that was my message. Um, again, I think the events in Dallas and Phoenix are very, very important. It's what do you do next? How do you profit instead of getting wiped out from this crisis? But uh, as I said, I think we're past the point of no return. It will not be long before people realize their money is worthless and they're gonna start bidding up real estate prices once again. They're gonna start rushing back into the markets, which is really what the big central banks want people to do. So in closing, this is, great, um, this is a great little pamphlet. It'll be available for those who attend the three day with us, but it's why Austrian economics matters. I'm not endorsing the philosophy, but one of my, I wasn't very good at it, but one of my favorite subjects in school was economics. And I would say the Austrian School of Economics is more important, except they're not in power today. The people that are in power today are Keynesian econ economists, people who believe that you can print money and save the economy. These guys, I would say, subscribe, I subscribe more to the Austrian School. So you can find out more about the Austrian School of Economics, just uh, they have uh, great educational pro programs. What am I? Excuse me. www.mises.org. Please go to and read them. This is a great pamphlet. If you don't come into the three-day event, uh, please get this pamphlet. I think it'll explain why there's been a battle of economic theory and why I think this is the better one, except that Keynesian economic theory is more in power today. These are kind of the macroeconomics of what's going on in the world. This is what I study. But it's by studying the ec economic philosophies is how I see the future and figure out what I'm going to do. As I've often said, you know, stupid to try and change the government. It's easier to change yourself. So I thank you all for, very, for listening. So my announcement to you is we have now passed the point of no return. And um, things, I, I, I hate to say this, but I think that what has happened before will happen again, which will be people will start dumping the dollars, it's exactly as Michael Maloney says, probably gold and silver will go through the roof. You know, anything of tangible value will go through the roof, and then people with driving wheelbarrows will suddenly say, the wheelbarrow is more important than the money. Or it'd be like the Zimbabwe. So this is the article uh, I recommended people reading. It says Greenspan, who was, for those who may not know, the Federal Reserve Chairman of the United States before Bernanke. And he says, I was wrong 30% of the time. And this is the April 8th, my birthday, 2010 issue. Uh, USA Today, but I think it's kind of funny the newspaper takes a jab at him and says, you know, if you're wrong 30% of the time, that makes you a C student, which is kind of funny. But this is the line I think that's really quite important for people to understand, and it's Greenspan blames Fannie and Freddie. And as we're going to talk about at the three-day event here in Phoenix, gold versus the dollar, is that's exactly what uh, Richard Duncan has been saying for years is that the U.S. government has lost, or the Federal Reserve Bank has lost control. And the Federal Reserve Bank has more power than the president. So this is quite important, as Fannie and Freddie, which are not government agencies, they're just backed up by the government, have more power right now, and they took the whole subprime mess out of control. But this is why this event is so important, is simply because it says here, he also said, this is Greenspan, regulars almost certainly will be unable to prevent future financial crises. That's the most important line in this whole article. He's making excuses, he's blaming this, he's blaming that. But this is the reason this event is so important, gold versus the US dollar, is that now Bernanke, the Fed chairman, or the president, have no control over the world economy. So I'll repeat it again. Greenspan, he also said, regulators almost certainly will be unable to prevent future financial crises. That's the thing. We're now out of control. We're now at the point of no return. So that's why your financial education and being vigilant is more important than ever before. Thank you very much.